Hey, Terry, uh, congrats on making the playing round. How would you describe the um, intensity in the, uh, the arena or how the game felt, even though no fans uh, were here? Um, from the upper deck, it felt like um, a big game. You know, we played <laughs> – every one of our games felt like a big game. Um, if, if you've watched all eight of our games, they've, uh, they, they've been tied down the end, and this was no different. Uh, the only thing different about this was, you know, our season was on the line, and uh, obviously the urgency was there. And uh, But we've had a lot of those already in the bubble. The next question is coming from Dwight Jaynes with NBC Sports Northwest. Terry, I'm curious what it feels like to be standing there on the sidelines with their team shooting and you're one day, or you're one up and their your whole season is in someone else's hands. He can beat you and he got a decent shot. A guy who's a pretty good scorer and he misses. What does all that feel like? Yeah, I trusted our defense. I'm smiling. <laughs> No, we had a good, you know, honestly, uh, we uh, we played good defense down the stretch. We couldn't get a rebound, but uh, we were forcing some tough shots. And, you know, that's, that's the way it is. And, you know, it's uh, I'm glad we got the stop when we needed it. But, you know, if you're down one with the ball or without the ball, you know, you got to either trust your offense or trust your defense either way. The next question is coming from Jason Quick with The Athletic. Terry, how would you describe your guys' post-game locker room? Um, I'd say that we were uh, we we're happy, we we're relieved, uh, we we're excited to be in the play-in round. Um, uh, you know, it's not like we were jumping up and down. We we're uh, we're where we we're where we wanted to be, and so I don't think anybody's uh, over the moon right now. It's just we know that we got a tough opponent in Memphis, so uh, it's, it was no time to really celebrate. The next question is coming from Mark Medina with USA Today. Yes, sir. Um, when you look at just the broad view of the game, not just knowing the stakes, but how close it was almost every possession, what was the range of the nation throughout the whole four years? Oh, you know, when we had a lot of open threes, uh, I was, you know, we felt I felt like we were going to break it open because we were getting such good shots in the fourth quarter. Uh, frustration when we couldn't get a rebound when it mattered. Uh, and then just a belief that we found a way to win these games. Uh, many of them were very similar to this, and we found ways to win. So uh, just kind of felt like, in the end, we're going to find a way to win. Next question is coming from Casey Holdall with trailblazers.com. Hi, Terry. Uh, obviously a phenomenal game for Damian, uh, but two plays in particular really seem like they stick out. One, the, the half-court shot and the steal there in the fourth quarter to, to, to get that possession. Um, can you just give your, your general thoughts on both those? Obviously, Damien's talked a lot about saying he would pull up from half court, but that you might get mad at him for doing it. I assume you're not I upset. Never, I never said I'd get mad at him. He, he has said that, that he, he thought, thought you would I, get I, mad at him. No, uh, honestly, the, the role that he's been on, uh, that, you know, we're missing some shots, and, you know, that's that's Dame. Uh, as far as the – the steal and diving on the floor, you know, the two things we showed in the locker room after the game was Nurk diving on the floor under two minutes, Dame diving on the floor. And that's, those are the things that we have to do uh, to win games, you know, and uh, those plays made the difference. Those two plays made a difference. The next question is coming from Joe Varden with The Athletic. Hey, you already said that every game has kind of been like this. After this last one, Damien's there with both hands on his knees. It seems like you guys have really had to kind of give everything you have to get this far. Do you, do you worry that you have enough left to get through this? Uh, no, uh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, but it did take all that we had. And, uh, you know, we said we said at the beginning, you know, we're probably going to need to go 6-2. and two. And that was our mindset. Um, we figured whether – some team was going to be there if we win some six and two. There were so many teams that somebody was going to be there at six and two. Um, but yeah, we've ex we've spent a lot of energy. But I'll say this, uh, and I think I've said this before, because there's no travel, because there's time to recuperate. Uh, there are no, no more back to backs. Uh, I think I think athletes are very resilient, 
And so obviously Dame and CJ have played a lot of minutes in particular, but um, I think they uh, they recuperate well. And I mean, you saw CJ bounce back tonight and Dame's been solid throughout. So um, when you take travel out and you take four and five nights out and all that, I think um, I think recovery is easier. Next question is coming from Dan Wicke with the LA Times. Hey, Terry. Um, obviously, this is completely unprecedented in so many different ways, but w when your team gets the invitation to to go and play and, and there's that glimmer of hope that, you know, we can come back pretty healthy and, and get to this place, did you see a change in any of your guys um, in, in terms of, you know, that, that hope? Um, and, and did that – you think that drove you guys? Well, you know, what Dame said uh, when they were still trying to figure out what the format was going to be, uh, you know, he said from the beginning, just we want to go down there and have a chance. And, you know, the format allowed for us to have a chance to get into the playoffs. And that's all you wanted for. You know, we dug our hole in the up until March 11th. We dug our hole. And uh, uh, and it is what it is. We knew the, the schedule was going to come back to us eventually. But we just wanted a chance. And... Uh, so I don't know if it's changed. And I would like to say, you know, everybody says we're healthy. We're still missing uh, Trevor Rees is not here and, and Rodney Hood's not here. So, you know, teams have injuries, but I don't want I don't want it left out that, uh, you know, like like we have our whole team. Next question is coming from Dwight James with NBC Sports Northwest. Yeah, Terry, you talked about the format and having a chance and all, but you guys voted against this format. Your team was the only one that did. And somehow, ironically, you were able to survive the format and move on into the play-in. Uh, do, do you see the irony in that? And what was it about this format that you guys didn't like? Well, honestly, I don't want to get into that. That's uh, that's ancient history. Uh, but, um, you know, ultimately, we, want, we preferred the other scenario. That's fine. Uh, we just want an opportunity to win and, and have it be competitive for everybody. So, uh, look, it, it turned out really well. Uh, the NBA has done an outstanding job with uh, what's going on so far. And uh, I think there have been some great games, very competitive. Obviously, the fight for eighth was, was really exciting. So, you know, the fact that we uh, preferred another scenario really at this point is irrelevant. Final questions coming from Davide Chinalato from the Gazette. Hey, Coach, Damon has scored like 154 points in the last three games. Is there any way to describe him? every one of them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is there any way to describe him, the way he's been performing? Uh, you know, I, I get asked that a lot. He's just, he's a special player. He's a special player and he's a special person. And, uh, you know, the special guy, the special NBA players in history have had that, that, that's something, and he has it. You know, he has a will that uh, that just transcends, and uh, and we wouldn't be the team obviously without not only his basketball skill but um, his mental makeup.